This video is sponsored by no one. But if you would like to have your name read out on future videos, it could be sponsored by you. All you have to do is become a pickled patron over on Patreon. And on top of having your name read out, you'll also get cool benefits like early access to all my content, access to my patron exclusive series, and live Q&As in which we can discuss what if ideas, behind the scenes details, and even which pizza topping is best. I'd also like to give a special thanks to Plus Ultraman and Mr. Negative for helping me with the renders on the thumbnail and encourage you all to subscribe since currently 77% of my viewers are not. But that's enough preamble from me, so let's get on with the GT special of what if Goku was Guardian of Earth. We resume in a world where Beerus never awoke, and the heroes of Earth never gained access to the realm of the gods beyond that of Kai's and Guardians. Instead, ten peaceful years have passed since the defeat of Majin Buu and Gohan's ascension to the position of Guardian. During this time, Raditz and Bulma have had a second child, a young daughter named Bra, while Trunks have been forced to split his time between training and working at Capsule Corp as Bulma's executive assistant, with plans to one day take over from her as CEO. As for the humans, Tien and Chertz, who are still at Capsule Corp, now mentoring Bra as a martial artist like they did Trunks, while Krillin has become world martial arts champ, having deposed the previous champ who was a posturing windbag, and joined the likes of Roshi, Tien, and Goku, who all at one time or another hold this position. Though, like his friends, it seems that he is only fated to be a one-term champion, as while the tournament is presently happening down on Earth, he has chosen to absent himself in favour of attending a far more important event up on the lookout, saying goodbye to an old friend. However, this is not a typical farewell, as unlike the many parties the Dragon Team have held on the Floating Palace, this time they are bearing witness to a death match between Nappa and Raditz. Having felt his time coming to an end, Nappa had requested this, as even after so long on Earth, he still has enough of his Saiyan nature left in him to want to die in battle like a true Saiyan warrior should. As the informal leader of the Z Fighters, Gohan had offered to carry out the deed, though having known the bald man the longest and being the most familiar with Saiyan customs, Raditz had insisted on being the one to fight Nappa. Nappa now the pair stand across from each other, both in their fighting stances, and as Raditz looks into the eyes of his former superior, he can't help but see how lined his face has become, how the simple act of standing under the weight of his own bulky frame has caused him to breathe heavily, and how his once tender dark moustache has become wispy and silver. In his cruel and callow youth, these sights would have disgusted him, but now just serve as motivation to play his part in this rite, so that when Gohan calls for the duel to begin, he lunges at Nappa, a shining Friday already forming on his fist. Having similarly lunged at the call, Nappa meets Raditz in the middle of the battlefield, ready to fight. Though in his slowed and weakened state, the old man is unable to even get off his opening move before the key-powered punch pierces his torso and robs him of the last of his vitality. Coughing up some blood, Nappa lays a hand on the shoulder plate of Raditz's armor, which the long-haired man had dusted off for the occasion, an unspoken sign of thanks for indulging him this one final time. Then, with a raspy breath, he expires, making Raditz the last full-blooded Saiyan. Following this dour event, the Dragon Team go their separate ways for a time, with five more years passing. While everything remains peaceful on Earth, the same cannot be said of space, as without the heroes to foil him, Dr. Mew is able to complete his baby project uninterrupted. However, as the dastardly Doctor soon learns, Baby has no intention of serving another, and so promptly dispatches him before setting out in search of any remaining Saiyans, his singular focus being their complete eradication as payment for the fate of the Tuffles. Fortunately for the Machine Mutant, it does not take long for him to pick up the trail, as the exploits of Goku and his friends have become legendary throughout the galaxy, thanks to their defeat of Frieza and Boo. This understandably leads Baby directly to Earth, though despite his best efforts to disguise himself as a meteorite, his presence is quickly nursed by Gohan, who asks Raditz, Trunks, and Tien to check out the landing site. What the trio find is rather unimpressive, a small blobby boy seemingly made of liquid metal which shimmers in the moonlight, though they can't deny the little guy has guts, as when he sees that Raditz is a Saiyan, he flies into a rage and attacks him. Figuring that this answers the question of if he is friend or foe, Raditz steps up and prepares to blast him, though to his surprise, the alien invader is fast, dodging his attack and liquefying as he forces himself up Raditz's nostrils, while making sure to create a tear that will lead him into the bloodstream. The sight of this causes Trunks to gag, while Tien asks if his friend is alright, receiving a sinister smirk in return, as Raditz replies that he's never felt better in a voice that is not his own. He then goes on the attack, showing himself to possess all of Raditz's power, along with Android 16's infinite energy heart, with this perhaps being the cause of why their melding is so successful, as both host and parasite are part machine. As a result, Tien and Trunks stand little chance when Baby Raditz transforms into Super Saiyan 3, declaring that they will be his first thralls and the beginning of a new Tuffle Empire right here on Earth. 
Understanding the threat at hand all too well thanks to the battle with King Piccolo and his youth, Tien orders Trunks to retreat and regroup with Gohan while he holds off Raditz. Heatedly, Trunks protests that he won't leave his one-armed mentor, though when Tien pierces him with his most steely glare and commands him to listen to his master just this once, the black-haired youth acquiesces, recognizing the Triclops' sacrifice. Taking off at top speed, Trunks soon finds himself in the lookout's courtyard, with Gohan and Mr. Popo there to meet him. Worriedly, the younger hybrid asks if the Guardian can explain what's going Going on, with Gohan gravely replying that whatever that thing is that took over Raditz's body has now begun infecting people all over the world, regardless of if they're a fighter or a civilian. He then elaborates that the Parasite has already taken hold of Tien, Chiaotzu, and Krillin, though it seems like Raditz is still the central host, giving orders to all the rest. Having always had a hard time sensing Gohan's otherworldly key, Trunks asks his cousin if he can beat Raditz and cure him of this infection, though with a shake of his head, Gohan admits that as it stands, he's pretty sure the boost in power that creature is giving Raditz's body puts his uncle's strength well above his own. Flaring up, Trunks asks if that means Gohan's just giving up then, sneering that he thought he was meant to be this world's guardian, though ignoring these barbs, Gohan retorts that he's far from given up. In fact, he even has a plan that he thinks might be able to cure everyone, though he was just waiting for his cousin to return since he needs someone to go down to the surface and protect everyone while he's away. Still confused, Trunks asks where Gohan is going, with the elder half San replying that he's going to retrieve the sacred water from the bowels of the lookout. This clearly concerns Mr. Popo, who asks his lord if there's no other way, though here Gohan shakes his head, saying he's afraid not. He then turns his back on the pair and begins heading inside, though before he goes he makes one last ominous pronouncement, stating that if he doesn't return, he would like Trunks to succeed him as guardian. Then, without another word, he vanishes into the main building, while Popo sighs deeply, and Trunks inquires why the pair are acting like this is something super dangerous. Meeting the young man's eye, Mr. Popo explains that the sacred water is guarded by the shades, or imprints, of all the guardians who came before Gohan, and that these shades will attempt to stop him from reaching his goal by any means necessary. Understanding the deeper implication of what the genie is saying, Trunks silently wishes his cousin luck before taking off to complete his own task, all the while doing his best to ignore the gnawing pit of worry that has opened up in his stomach. Making Capsule Corp his first port of call, Trunks is relieved to see that Bulma and Bra have not been infected, though it seems he is not the only newcomer, as Baby has also zeroed in on this place, planning to add all of West City to his empire. Despite Gohan's warning about his father's increased power, Trunks cannot simply stand aside and let this happen, with him leaping into Super Saiyan 2 and allowing his rage to strengthen him as he flies up at Baby Raditz, yelling at him to let his dad go and fight him like a real warrior. Reveling in this bloodlust, Baby lowers himself to meet the hybrid, and up close, Trunks sees for the first time how much Baby's possession has changed Raditz, with him now sporting silver hair, red facial markings, and crosshairs for eyes. This makes it easier for the young man to differentiate this being from his father in his mind, allowing him to attack with all his might and actually land a good hit on Baby. Seething, Baby snarls the boy won't get another lucky hit, only to be cut off when a knee to the gut has him coughing, followed by a hammer blow to the cheek that sends him crashing into the dirt. Staggering back to his feet, Baby lets out a petulant howl to the heavens, refusing to be shown up by this impudent half-breed. However, as he looks skywards, he gets an idea, a devilish, devious idea. Those filthy Saiyans use their vile monkey form to destroy his people, the noble Tuffles. So why not use that very form to wipe out the last Saiyan's family and flatten his adoptive home? To this end, Baby stares directly at the moon, feeling the blood waves trigger something in Raditz's tail. Then he begins to grow, becoming massive, while his already immense power rises to match his new form. This is incredible. Meanwhile, still in the air, Trunks watches in horror at this transformation. While he had heard of great apes from his father, he had never seen one, nor had he ever imagined there'd be one with gold fur. Unfortunately, this great ape's hair color is not its only unique feature, as when it punches Trunks, the hybrid is certain the boost he has received is more than the standard 10 times. As a result, despite the young man's attempts to regain his advantage by tapping into a rage-enhanced Super Saiyan 2, he quickly finds himself as little more than a punching bag, being thrown through buildings and other structures as some sort of sick game for baby's amusement. Briefly, Trunks attempts to look up at the moon himself, wondering if his Saiyan biology will allow him to transform without a tail, though unfortunately he has no such luck, with baby using this moment of distraction to kick him into the capsule corp building. Here at least the spiky-haired man has some luck, as he comes to a stop in his mother's lab, where she and Bra are huddled, having watched Trunks' beating in silent horror. Weakly, Trunks tries to tell them to run, but is shushed by Bulma, who holds her son close, and tells him that she saw what he was trying 
trying to do there, and she has an idea. If she can recreate the properties of Moonlight with a device, then perhaps she can hit him with a super strong dose that will trigger the transformation even without a tail. Truthfully, Trunks thinks this is rather risky, but having no better plan, and knowing that he can't stand a chance against Baby without that great ape form, he tells his mum to do it, while solemnly asking Bra to look after her. He then takes off again, pretending to flee in an attempt to buy his mother time, and while Baby falls for this, he has not forgotten his original reason for coming here, sending in a horde of possessed humans led by Tien to infect the residents of Capsule Corp. This puts Trunks in a terrible bind, but being the son of the world's smartest human, he is able to come up with a plan, redoubling his speed to draw Baby away, then vanishing inside a skyscraper and concealing his key. As he had hoped, Baby takes the bait, demolishing the place floor by floor, all taunting Trunks that he'll get him sooner or later. This allows the young man to fly back to Capsule Corp unseen, with him arriving back at the lab just as Tien bursts through the door. Though it pains him to fight the man who instructed him on martial arts, Trunks knows the real Tien would want him to do this, charging up a tri-beam and blasting him back at the door and through several walls to boot. However, this comes as a cost, as through the Triclops' eyes, Baby is now aware of Trunks' location once again, with the half sand being pretty sure his trickery won't work a second time. Thankfully, being a quick study, it is at this moment that Bulma completes her Bloodswave prototype, lifting what looks like a sci-fi rocket launcher and leveling it at Trunks. While the young man isn't super keen on his mum shooting him with an untested weapon, he knows he can't back down now, and so with a gulp tells her to fire. A moment later, Trunks feels his entire body begin to tingle and grow, and as he looks down, he sees golden fur blossoming up his arms. Perfect. Now he should be strong enough to at least bring Baby to a stalemate. However, before he can put that into action, a haze comes over his mind, obscuring his goals, obscuring his morals, and even obscuring his identity. In their place is left only a single thought, a single word, Rampage. Up on the lookout, Gohan is the last man to the Shinsenkai, the otherworldly domain of the past guardians, with him finding it to be a rather creepy place filled with shadows and tombstones. Nonetheless, he pushes on, finding no challenge in the spirits who arise to stop him, having surpassed the power of an earthling long ago. Even the shade of the Namekian Kami is an easy opponent, being swept aside with a simple flick of Gohan's wrist, though his power is not what worries the hybrid, but rather the knowledge of who is coming next. As if on cue, a new figure emerges from the mist, Goku, and though he is merely an imprint like all the rest, his appearance causes Gohan's breath to catch in his throat. In truth, there are so many things the younger guardian wants to say to the Revenant, though it seems he will not get the chance, as already the shade has taken a fighting stance, clearly intending to drive him off like his predecessors tried and failed to do. Wasting no time, Gohan throws himself at the Goku shade, clashing his forearm against its and swinging a punch to its head in an attempt to end things quickly. However, along with Goku's devotion to protect, it seems the shadow has all of Goku's power and martial arts prowess, with it deftly dodging the blow and retaliating by slamming a headbutt into Gohan's stern that leaves him gasping. Next the shade attempts to trip him, though being quick on his feet, Gohan sidesteps the move and even manages to hook his own foot around the imprint's calf, sending it sprawling. He then advances on his down foe, still intent on ending the fight as quickly as possible to silence his hammering heart. Though exhibiting Goku's wiliness, the shade reveals this fall was a feint, bicycle kicking Gohan in the face and floating into the air. Giving chase, Gohan begins firing off a beam barrage, though for some reason his aim is off, and despite his best efforts, he cannot hit his phantom father. That is until the Goku shade suddenly doubles back and begins rushing Gohan with a Kamehameha charging in his hands. Knowing how dangerous this move is when used by a master like Goku, Gohan begins charging his own, though having a head start, the imprint fires its first, with the younger guardian being struck head on and sent crashing to the ground. A moment later, Gohan feels two knees collide with his ribs as the Goku shade hisses at him to leave, calling him an interloper. Though staying strong, the hybrid flares his aura to push his foe away, while protesting that he is the current guardian of Earth, and he is here to retrieve the sacred water so he can do his duty and protect the inhabitants. This does nothing to sway the shade's emotions, with it simply hissing once more for Gohan to leave and calling him unworthy. Though when it attempts to claw at the younger man's face, he catches the blow with ease, stating that once he also thought he was unworthy, but his dad showed him how wrong he was about that. He then adds that he understands now. This revenant may have Goku's appearance and power, but it really is nothing like him. It's just a cheap copy, an afterimage, and he's got no reason to be afraid of fighting it, since the real Goku is long gone, and it's his job to carry the torch he left behind. He then bursts into his variant Super Saiyan form, the golden aura illuminating the graveyard, and robbing the shade of its power to keep him scared and off balance. Then, as the aura consumes the spectre itself, it too fades away into nothing. 
leaving Gohan's path clear and bright as he steps forward to claim the sacred water from a pedestal just in front of him. Using the seven air currents, Gohan is able to distribute the sacred water throughout the world in an instant, theoretically neutralizing Baby's threat. However, as with everything Gohan and his friends do, it cannot be that simple, as when he emerges from the Shinsenkai back into the real world, he senses that while Baby's key can only be felt in one place rather than countless, that one source has grown exponentially stronger. Not only that, but another power very similar to Trunks has also spiked quite significantly, though it feels oddly clouded. Wanting to get to the bottom of this ASAP, Gohan flies back to the top of the lookout and asks Mr. Popo for a status update. When he is filled in on the situation, the Guardian cannot help but frown, as with Trunks on a mindless rampage and Baby stronger than ever, it looks like it's up to him to save the world. Though how he is supposed to do so when he couldn't even handle Baby in his base form is anyone's guess. Thankfully, Mr. Popo has a solution, suggesting he could try to become a golden great ape as well, since with all the time and effort he put into understanding and controlling his rage, he may be able to keep himself under control as an ape. Truthfully, Gohan is doubtful of this, remembering the one time he went great ape as a child, but seeing no other option, he agrees. Though as a precaution, he insists on transforming up here on the lookout so he can't hurt anyone if it goes wrong, while also giving Popo instructions to destroy his tail if he can't gain control in five minutes, since they can't afford to waste time on something that isn't working when at any moment Trunks might accidentally kill someone, or Baby might find a new way to start possessing people. Noting his understanding, Popo promises to do as his lord has commanded. Commanded. And so with a deep breath, Gohan looks up at the moon. Thanks to never having had his tail removed, he is able to transform naturally, becoming a giant gold monkey and going berserk like his cousin. However, unlike Trunks, he doesn't have to carry this mental burden on his own, as through his telepathic link to the Kais, Shin and the Grand Supreme Kai are able to speak into his addled mind, attempting to calm him down, with Shin urging him to remember their lessons back from when he was a boy. This unfortunately proves fruitless, with a five minute time limit drawing closer and closer. That is until a new voice speaks up through the link, that of Goku. In an encouraging voice, Goku expresses his faith in his son, telling him that he knows he can do this, and that all he has to do is remember who he is and what he's fighting for. These words at last break through the haze, with Gohan not only regaining his sense of self, but also a humanoid form, as his simian body begins to shrink back down to a normal size. However, this is not Gohan's normal appearance, as he now possesses a thick coat of fur like a great ape, though in this case red, along with wilder hair than usual, though the most noticeable change is his power, which now even eclipses that of the golden great apes. In his head, Gohan hears cheers and sighs of relief as Goku and the Kais express their pride in him, and so giving them an appreciative thumbs up, he Kai Kais down to the surface to put an end to this madness once and for all. Appearing in front of the now ruined Capsule Corp, Gohan's first port of call is to check on Bulma and Bra, with both being mercifully alright, having been shielded by a now recovered Tien, along with Krillin and Chiaotzu, who have come along to help in the fight. Thanking them for their assistance, Gohan requests the trio keep Baby distracted so he can calm down Trunks, as if he can teach him this form, they should have more than enough power to defeat the Parasite. Nodding their understanding, the humans set to their task, while as promised, Gohan flies up to speak with Trunks. Still being lost to mindless rage, the younger half sand attempts to take a swipe at his cousin upon first seeing him. Though proving the strength of his new form, Gohan is able to stop this, meeting the ape's eyes, and urging him to remember who he is. Wanting to help, Bra, in an act of incredible bravery and stupidity worthy of any Saiyan, flies up to join her cousin, and it is the sight of her, the person he feels most responsible to protect, that finally manages to get through to Trunks, with him letting out a single docile grunt as he too transforms back into a humanoid. Upon seeing her big brother is okay, Bra wraps her arms around Trunks' now hairy waist, though in the tone of a leader, Gohan says there will be time for celebration later. Right now they need to defeat Baby and rescue Raditz. Grunting his understanding, Standing, Trunks steps forth to stand shoulder to shoulder with Gohan, then as one, the pair flare their auras and go on the attack. Against two Super Saiyan 4s, Baby Raditz stands no chance, with a giant monkey quickly being forced to feel the pain and humiliation of all his victims as he is beaten back easily. However, the greatest indignity comes when Krillin of all people lops off his tail with a Destructo Disc, thus reverting him to his base form and forcing Baby to abandon his vessel as it no longer has the strength to be of any use. Desperately, the Machine Mutant then attempts 
to flee, though before he can get very far, he feels his body seize up as he is struck from behind by a thundershock surprise, courtesy of Raditz, who had learned the technique along with several others during his time training with Roshi, ironically in case he ever read to some Jew great ape Gohan. And speaking of Gohan, he does not hesitate to make use of the opening his uncle has created for him, charging up a massive Kamehameha and firing at Baby, who is swiftly and decisively disintegrated. However, this victory is not without cost, as when Gohan, Trunks, Bulma and Bra all rush over to hug Raditz, they find him pale and panting. Hopefully, Gohan offers to fetch him a senzu bean, but with a wan smile the Elder Saiyan shakes his head, replying that it wouldn't do any good, as the damage his body took while under Baby's control was just too much, pushing him beyond what even a Saiyan warrior can endure. Tears swim in Gohan and Trunks' eyes at this, with them blaming themselves, but with a gruff laugh, Raditz refutes this, saying it's Baby's fault. They just did what they had to to protect the Earth, and he's proud of them for it. He then looks to Bulma, laying a kiss on her forehead, and thanking her for so many good years, before departing this life to rejoin his brother and Nappa, a smile on his face. From here, peace returns indefinitely, as with no living Android 17, a portal cannot be opened to hell, and with no Dragon Balls, the Shadow Dragons don't emerge. However, this does not mean the Z Fighters get complacent, as taking Rats' words to heart, Gohan, Trunks, and Bra train together frequently, knowing that it is up to them to guard the Earth, a duty they uphold for the rest of their days, until finally it is time for a new generation to take over, and a new story to be told. And that's where we'll leave this GT special. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts, suggestions, or screams of rage in the comments below.